going to pass it over now to um, Tony Vickers, who's the um, uh, the head of uh, Alter in the UK, uh, the Lib Liberal Democrat. Uh, well, I was the head. I'm now I've handed over to Captain William Davison, who lives more centrally in this country and uh, a bit younger than me. And uh, it's time to move on. Anyway, I'm still the vice chair of Alter, and um, stands for what action on land taxation and economic reform. Um, I'm interested in uh, what others have to say uh, this evening, but I'm just going to concentrate on land value taxation. I'll start by explaining what it is, because the terms land tax are used to cover a multitude of different types of tax. A land value tax is an annual tax, like your rates, like the council tax, based upon the ongoing value and not the transaction price uh, in, in, in when you buy and sell. A, a, a house. It, it discounts the value of, build, of the building on the site. It just looks at the, the value of the location. And rather than go into the technicalities of how you separate out the value of the location on the site from the value of the buildings on it, let me show you that it can be done. It is done in other parts of the country, and people who tried it in this country said it would not be a problem. That's a technical issue uh, which I ask you with respect to accept. Next door, but one is the RICS, and they know uh, how to do it. I can assure you. So it's um, there are three strong arguments for taxing in this way, as opposed to the way we do. Firstly, it's socially just. Secondly, it's the best way to finance necessary infrastructure that society needs. Thirdly, it's economically efficient. First, the social justice argument. Um, in the UK, the wealthiest 1% own almost 25% of all property. So the, the wealth differential, and most wealth is in the form of landed wealth, is much more marked than the income differential, which itself is getting more and more marked. Basing a tax system almost exclusively on income rather than assets, as we do now, means actually that the very rich can avoid paying their fair share of taxes which entrenches inequality. So you get the situation where the only people who can afford to get on the housing ladder are those who's got, got the bank of mum and dad to help them. So it entrenches equality within a section of the population that happens to be uh, in possession of landed wealth already. So that's the socially unjust part of it. Secondly, infrastructure. When you build the Jubilee Line extension, uh, you automatically give value to locations that are near the stations. How near you have to be to benefit from value, it's impossible to settle, but basically the nearer you are, the more the increase in football, which creates the value that is then associated with those sites. Uh, and yet we pay for those pieces of infrastructure by general taxation. The most efficient way to capture taxation, to capture the, the value created by that infrastructure is to tax the beneficiaries and by definition, the beneficiaries of infrastructure such as uh, new rail links are those that happen to have title to the sites near the um, terminuses of those infrastructure. Now, it can work in the negative. You build a new sewage plant, there are negative externalities to that, and the people that would live near a sewage plant, they would see their values lowered, and therefore, uh, the, the um, they, they should be compensated for the harm uh, of that externality. But it's the principle of internalizing an externality that makes uh, for this to be the most efficient way of paying for public infrastructure. Thirdly, economic efficiency. If you think about who pays income tax, it's actually the employer and not the employee. Most taxes on profits, on earnings, even on consumption, add to the cost of the things that we buy and the things that we produce, and they are therefore inflationary, and they are what's called a, um, you can either call them a negative, they, they have a, a, a negative welfare impact in that they add to costs of the things that we want, the good things, uh, or another way of putting it is that there is a dead weight burden on the active economy, the productive part of the economy caused by taxes. A tax on land values, or something which actually, land does not contribute actively to production, it is just there, it's provided it is a natural resource that we work upon, 
those who have title to it, as Winston Churchill said, can earn money in their sleep by doing nothing, simply by holding the piece of paper that gives them the title, the exclusive title to that site. So by taxing those people, the ones that have that title, you're not adding to the cost of production at all. So therefore you are minimizing, or if not doing away with, this deadweight burden on the economy. So you make an economy which uses that form of tax more efficient and more competitive. I think I've given you an indication of what gives value to a site. It can either be its natural position, you're near a deep water port and therefore um, the trade can take place at that location. Or you've got fertile soil and so your, your crops will grow more productively. Or there are a lot of people moving around. There are people who will buy and sell and who will work for you. So the, uh, the location, either by natural or societal uh, action, has again value. And as I, as I said, the, the special thing about this form of tax is that it is uh, economically neutral. It doesn't add a burden on the productive economy. So one has, has to ask, why hasn't it been done before? Well, if you look at the history of all modern societies, Basically, the power was held by those who owned land. Until 100 years ago, or a little bit more, you only had a vote if you were a property owner. So it is quite natural um, that the, the laws of most modern societies have been created by those with an interest in avoiding the tax burden. Income tax, for example, was brought in as a temporary measure to help pay for the homeonic moors, but it proved very convenient time to keep it going and every year we have to pass finance bills to make sure it does keep going. Um, so that gives you some idea of who are the losers out of this reform of tax. The losers are the people who are earning money by doing nothing in our society, a very small proportion. The big losers are around about 1% of the voting population. Most people in the, in the active part of uh, the economy, most people who are still in the workforce would benefit if we had a significant shift off taxes on income and taxes on profits 